What is up guys? Welcome back to Devinator Gaming and today we have yet another classic game from nearly 11 years ago, Halo Reach. This was my first Halo game I really got into and for many of us is known as one of the greatest gaming experiences that we've ever had in our lives. Halo Reach scored great with the critics earning itself a high score of 91 and having a must play for the Xbox 360 according to Metacritic.com. And a must play it was. Starting off with the campaign, you first learn your character is joining a group of Spartans known as the Noble Team. You fill in the role and complete the team as Noble Six, but the other Spartans aren't happy with you joining, and Noble One is quick to assure you that you need to cut your lone wolf act and work with the unit. So you get to reach and discover the Covenant are invading after you're finding a group of locals explaining they were attacked. The first few missions are fairly easy as the game introduces you to the characters and more common, the more common Covenant enemies you'll be seeing throughout the game. The game also gives you some options for pathways throughout, not altering the ending in either way, but rather giving you an option of starting out east or west, then circling around to do the one you didn't choose firstly. But in Mission 4, you team up with June to brush up on your sniping capabilities. And then in 6, you come to your first heart-wrenching death, George. He dies valiantly by sacrificing his own life to ensure the Covenant Corvette heads back to the supercarrier and explodes, making this a real one-way trip. But on to the next mission, however. Cat is the next, and one by one the members of Noble Team fall, really setting the mindset of how bad off Reach is and the impending doom it faces is nearly upon us. You help guard Halsey's lab and she presents to you an AI. This is a familiar one. It's a short and brief appearance, but Cortana does make her appearance in this game, and she picks our character, Noble Six, to be the one to deliver her off the planet of Reach, which is now where our story is headed. At any means necessary, Noble Six has to get her off of Reach. This ultimately leads to the death of Noble One, sacrificing his life to ensure this happens. And finally, Emil is the last one to perish from from a group of energy sword wielding elites after yet another act of Spartan heroism. The package has now been delivered to Keys, but now Noble Six must make his way to the Mac Cannon to clear the skies, allowing a safe departure from Reach. A cutscene later, and some credits, and the game is over. Or is it? You get the Lone Wolf mission, which is a flashback on Noble One, which, by the way, his name is Carter. It's Carter's team. I've just failed to mention it this entire video saying to cut the lone wolf crap out so which is it's a flashback it's a nice little callback to the very beginning of the game to the end of the game in my opinion and you make one final stand on reach watching the helmet glass crack as you take hits from the endless wave of covenant soldiers and finally being overran the players watch noble six die then plays the final cutscene for Reach, explaining the importance of what was done and how the ultimate sacrifices made to get Cortana off of Reach helped save humanity. But that is just the campaign. There are five other features that Reach brings to its table. And next, I'm going to cover the online multiplayer experience. And personally, this is where about probably half of my time of the game was spent. The announcer's voice was just incredible and one that you can expect from a Halo game. And the matchmaking was awesome and great fun to hop into a lobby and play with friends. And to my surprise, as it's getting ready to come up now, I was actually able to get on matchmaking 11 years, nearly 11 years later, and capture a, a gameplay footage of playing a multiplayer match, which further provides evidence of my point that even nearly 11 years later people are still finding enjoyment and capturing that nostalgic feel of hopping into a game of Halo Reach. The customization was also another great factor which carried over into the other aspects of the game campaign and such. The color of your armor, the changing and the options of changing them, unlocking new ranks to get cooler looking gear and the earning of points to buy them. Much different than today's system which encourages you which is which encourages the player that you can have 
all the cool stuff you want if your wallet is fat enough to get it. And with tons of different play modes, and mul the multiplayer had something for every player. Whether it was the competitive scene or just having fun with your squad and party games, this game delivered. Next, we have Firefight. This is something I spent very little time on, but Firefight is basically like the last mission in the campaign. You select the difficulty and map and different firefight game modes. You get your weapons and armor ability and fight an endless swarm of covenant, earning the points as you go along. There is no end or winning or losing in this mode. It is simply just an extra feature of hopping in solo or the friends and testing how long you can last against the endless horde of enemies and how many points you can accumulate in a single round of this mode. Next, we have custom games. This is where a group of friends or a group of friends and you can separate team v team or an online multiplayer team starts talking to smack you get them in a custom game mode you set the rules you set the map and you set the game mode and you have at it this was a fun way to see which team is the best or you can split your group of friends up and on the teams and see which team was truly the best ultimately this was a bragging rights game and it is honestly what they should have named this game mode I'm saving the best for last in this video, so next is theater mode. You get a badass kill streak in a game, or you have an insanely great game carrying the entire team on your back, view it here. Want to see where you've made a mistake in a gunfight? Or how an enemy got the upper hand on you? Then theater mode is the stop for you. Finally, and simply, my favorite option that Halo Reach brought to the table, and one where I spent nearly all my time on was the Forge. And of course, I mainly played on Forge World. You build your own map, put the vehicles you want in it, create a mini show. This is what my friends and I done in this mode. We would watch the series Red vs. Blue, and some of you may be familiar with this, but we would watch that series on YouTube, and it would give us all the inspiration that we needed. Hop on Forge World, and get to working creating the internet's next big thing. We spent countless hours in this world, fought on ideas, killing each other in spite, making an amazing world and saving it, getting on and changing things up and playing it all out to make sure that no team would have an advantage over our other, hiding energy swords, scattering snipers where they would be used on ridges or in a building. This is where Reach honestly peaked for me. Wrapping this video up, for the time Halo Reach was the pinnacle of gaming. Its graphics were beautiful, although I will say the campaign did not age well for me. I played it on the Series X. Uh, it just didn't it didn't age well, in my opinion. But they do have a remastered version on PC that you could play if graphics are that big of a deal for you. The game had to live up to the hype that was 3 in 3 ODST, which it did and then some, and is arguably better than its predecessor. But that's up for your debate. Reach had a well-made campaign that was to the point and was easily beaten in a mere 8 hours, or you could take longer and achievement hunt it, or play the game on harder difficulties and make more strategic moves, making the moves count, saving ammo, and getting the 125 and 150 gamer score for beating it on heroic or legendary. The game provided a well-rounded multiplayer and a way to view your games to study gameplay or just bask in your glory of having the game of a lifetime. Want to burn some time waiting for friends to get on online or just tired of multiplayer? Hop on Firefight and survive the wave as long as possible. You got some beef with somebody? Set up a custom game and squash it. See who the best teams really are head to head. Factual information. Put your money where your mouth is. And lastly, if you're feeling creative and itching to net make the next best map or possibly create a mini-series mini show, The Forge is the place for you. And again, that is where I spent a lot of my time really trying to mimic the Red vs. Blue series from back in the day. Thank you guys for watching, and if you did enjoy, be sure to leave a like as well as a subscribe, and that would be greatly appreciated. Also, leave a comment telling me what your favorite part of Halo Reach was and why you did or didn't love the game. Next week, I'll be doing a similar style video, but with a newer game. And I like to kind of mix it up, bring these nostalgic feelings, but I'm also 
playing new games that I want to bring to the table as well on this channel. It's the unpopular opinion, and this is an unpopular opinion, of why I did not enjoy Star Wars Fallen Order as much as I thought I would, and as much as I thought it would live up to its hype. It just didn't for me. But be sure to stick around next week, turn your notification bell on if you haven't yet already, so you can be notified when that video does go up. And I think that's all I got for you guys today. Thank you very much for watching. And I'll see you guys in the next video.